Okay, my friends, Roger Spur, Mud Fossil University. What you see right here is iron oxide staining out of this, whatever it is, ears, and out from these cavities, which would be where blood gushing out of this thing from this giant's weight on top of him is gushing out blood from his ears and out of his body and running out here into the pool. Now, I don't know who they attribute this to, but I can tell you what, that is from blood that's blood would this, this is exactly what would happen now i know they have a little pipe in here and so forth i don't know i i, I can't account for what i see i can only tell you this is what happens when you have hematite which is the red blood magnetite is the black blood plus i can tell you what if i could get in here with a microscope and look at all the specificity of what I'm seeing here this could very well be a petrified giant and I'll tell you why I can say that with somewhat of a possibility here's why I can say what I say because I've read Metamorphosis by Ovid and a lot of you know the Theogony by Hesiod and you know um, Herodotus and all of these ancient texts and Plato and about Atlantis, which was dictated to him, I believe, by Solon, and he got it from the ancient uh, Egyptians, and they got it because they were the leftovers of Atlantis, basically. Now, what does it say here? It's, the, it's really the mo one of the most important books ever written. They say it's the, as important as the Bible, literally. And it comes down here and it says, what's the theme of the whole book? Let's see what this is. Uh, and there are a ton of books, and he was. Uh, here's the themes. Uh, it's right here metamorphosis or transformation. That means changing something into something else. Is a unifying theme amongst the episodes of his metamorphosis. Ovid raises its significance explicitly right in the opening lines. He says, I intend to speak of forms changed into new entities. Accompanying this theme is often violence inflicted upon a victim whose transformation, a victim whose transformation becomes part of the natural landscape. This theme amalgamates the much explored opposition between the hunter and the hunted and the thematic tension between art and nature. And it's with violence against the, two, the one they transformed a lot of times. And I'll show you another one. All right, Ovid said they turned him into stone. Well, this is tendon, and that is flesh. And I have ones right here, right now, that I'm going to go through that show exactly the same architecture. That is a, a leg tendon. And this was turned to stone. No question whatsoever, I could prove this if I was on site. I haven't been on site to these things, so I can't really say 100% without question, without being there. But, you know, I'm going to show you what I do see and why I make the conclusions I make. By the way, they tried to reinforce this. They put some metal rebar in up here and try to patch it back and forth. It originally had a big bowl that was holding up flowers or something in ancient antiquity. They did it for their own fun. Just, to, just they were gods. They did whatever they wanted. All right, this is the Colossus El Apennino, or I believe is what they call it. He's strangling a dragon. They said they made him into their landscape for fun. I could tell. I know the signatures of transition metals and kaolin clays and what happens to the body, and I could see all of the things that I could very easily prove what I'm looking at. They say, oh, some guy in the 1500s or so said, he says he carved this. Well, no. He put a little tiny dragon on the back and excavated into it. He didn't carve this. All right, here's the legs. Here's the tendinous material I showed you. There's the red bloody stuff that is coming out from the fleshy parts that did the muscular activity. Now, let me show you what I have here. I just got in from Tish Egerton. All right, I'm not going to get too deep in it now because I got a lot of research to do on these. This just came in. I got in this and I got in some other things from Tish. A huge, huge thing, very similar to the 
classes of alpine there. Now, these I have several different varieties of no-toes here, and she had some similar, but you can see where the fibula breaks off. You see the fibula breaks off? And this we have the same thing. You see that little strap right there? And the ball, the heel ball. Same thing here, the heel ball and a little strap. And underneath is the concussion zone, same as it has here, which is where you bang your heel bone and we we don't have these these are springs one will load and because it comes here and it pulls it is actually springs and latches that pull and they come into that cavity so this one pulls and then that one pulls along with it so you get a return to where it's unsprung and it's, it's pretty pretty interesting architecture now and I have it right here and we've, I'm, I'm looking at it in the microscope it's 100 percent biological no question whatsoever and um, we have all the red blood in it and the pins are different makeup than the coils and then there's latches and all kinds of stuff let me should give you one quick quick look at uh, where is it right here okay there it is right here you see this they have these little pins and latches here, and they come around. There's that latch that would come right up to the leg, which I showed you before. But you see here? See that right there? Look carefully. Just take your time. There's a little tiny hole in there, and what is that? It looks like a wire that comes all the way up around, and then it comes back over to here to another one of those little latches. You see that one here? You see the one up there? That wire comes right up around to that, which would mean that when this pulled in, if you stepped and there was toes here, and it forced this up, this rocks right here, that's all. That's all it does. And what happens when? This is attached to this. It forces this to go up. You see it right there? It forces this to go up. All that does is stay with this and pulls this latch right along with it. What does that do? It pulls this wire. What does that do? It pulls this coil into this cavity. So now you got a spring loaded here that wants to return because it's turned this way pulling against there. That pulls this way so you got this one, this one and then it automatically returns. Back here you got another one of these latches you got a saddle that here that the upper bone sits in. I have, hold on a second. Alright, I'm going to go through this one more time and then we're going to look at the extreme details. I think I've already shown them to you, but I want to just go one more time. That is the red bloody, red blood. And then there is also black blood, which is the um, um, vein blood. Now, they, this is the one I have there. This is my noto, and I showed that, I believe. I know I did. And you can see where the bone was here and where the leftover piece of the bone broke off and is still there and how the fibula falls off. Same thing with tissues. And the same thing with this one here. However, where the, the bone was up here, you see it right here? The bone sits right up here. And I showed you this before. The bone sits on a little platform here, which is this platform. All right, so that's where the bone sits. Now, it has one little piece that hangs over the edge, which broke and was laying here. And the other piece was with the, the um, tibia, and that uh, fibia, I'm sorry, that falls right off. So, what we're looking at here, let's just cut to the chase. This is the ball. This is the strap. The strap runs up to the bone running down. This is obviously the, the other side of the foot this way. So <laughs> there it is. And it, I showed you the bones before that are in our feet. No bones. Let's look at the details. All right, this goes back to the first shots Tish sent me, and she did the best of anybody that's ever taken any shots of anything. Absolutely fabulous. This is right after she took them out of the ground. So there was some nice moisture still in here. We could see some of the definition. No, this was years ago, several years ago, a couple, three, I don't know. And, um, you know, they dry out, and that's... But that, this was the original foot. Now... 
she sent me these now that now it's in a microscope and I can see it much much better in the microscope even though I don't have any moisture in it yet now don't forget that's the strap that runs up to the leg that goes up now I have to have the lights down or you won't be able to see it at all see it's down under the microscope now we're gonna come down let me let me brighten it up a little bit but don't forget now let's look at you got to do this under really dim lights. I remember I told you you're going to have to just muddle through with me because that's what I do. I muddle through it and then I come up with a conclusion. You make your own conclusion. I am looking at all, these are all blood vessels. Anytime you see these holes in the black and the red, that's blood and blood vessels. Now, what is this? I don't know. <laughs> I'm seeing some kind of a pin like thing with another one of these little things and I'm seeing almost what looks like a cam with a pin here in the original ones you could see the actual pin down below here you see that uh, somewhere right down I believe that's the pin right there in the original one now it's all sort of rusted out and you really can't see it all that well although we might be able to see it in the microscope when I get right, right down close but there's some form of a cam looking thing here, which is up here. And uh, this is the hitter when you hit your heel. That's the bumper pad on the bottom of your heel. So, bang. Now, what's going to happen? You've got a foot and it hits, and it hits like that. So, I mean, it's going to maybe push this heel up a little bit, which would rock this and push against this cam away from it which would force this to do that type of thing well I don't know what it would do but it's attached back to here and it rocks I don't know they, there seems to be a lot of things going on here that I can't explain so I'd love to have some anatomy fanatic go into this you know some somebody that knows a lot about anatomy and that knows a lot about machines because I'm going to tell you what right now Look at this up above here. Hold on. I'm going to move this in. That is the, the spring assembly. Now we're going to get into this real close. And I probably already have. But you can see there's even bumper pads. The pin's a different material. That's a blood vessel servicing or maybe even greasing the damn pin. I don't know. Let's go down and look at it. There's the pin right there. Now that looks like it's made out of some kind of granite. And that's like some kind of blood vessel, or I don't know what it is. But, well, I know it's a blood vessel. And look at the different types of materials right up against one another. Like this, this is a bloody transition between some form of fibrous which has turned into silicates, but you see, this is all, all biology. And if I put a little water on there, you'll see blood come right out of here. But that's the, that's the um, pin that is in the center. You can see a little bit of blood here and there, and that's, that's a blood vessel. Now, if we come way down to the front pin, This is the one that twists right here. You see it twist? Same thing here. You got this coming right around in a twisty. And back up to here. Let me see if I can... This is where they're really almost like the ends of where you're toes would be and they push up against these little cones and here it is right down here See? that's where they push up from the front 
they're attached together and they push up and I, I think I showed it I'm, I'm almost positive but you have bumpers here that's made out of like a, 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 a rubbery looking material and there's bumpers all around these springs so they they're made to give and take and be cushioned and it's just un unbelievably fabulous and that was that blood vessel I showed you on this one. They all have them because they, everything has to be serviced with some form of nutrition. And, and that's why all in your body, you're always moving chemistry back and forth. But when you die, it has to stabilize. And that's why blood just stays red and black blood turns black because it has less oxygen and it stabilizes in a different way and then other materials have different colors and textures and grains and you know different crystallization patterns and it's just the way it works and I know all about this stuff now so we got a lot to learn and I do I literally know as much as anybody right at this moment and I've been studying it for 10 years and nobody's ever even paid any attention to it because they think it's crazy and it's not crazy it's crazy not to pay any attention to it because this is serious and this is a foot and this was an answer I, I guarantee well I can't guarantee you but that sure looks like something that would be on the foot of some human-ish thing and my no toe foot looks just like a human foot except there's no toes in it and we have these are absolutely gigantic too so and i have one right here in my shop that's over a foot wide the heel it's about that wide and i'm going to be going through it and it's got all the blood and all the tendon and all that and i have other fingertips and so forth that are wider than that have the same exact patterns we're going to go through it. There's just no question about it anymore.